Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's Global COVID-19 Show. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and it's my honor to convene this conversation around various aspects of COVID-19. We've been covering everything from the health issues, through the economic problems, through the racial equity story during this pandemic. And today we are talking to our friend Damon Brown, who's making a return visit to the show. When he was here last time, he talked a little bit about positivity and how we think about our work and how we can be positive in the world. He mentioned his new book that was going to come out, Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. And he will be with us in just a minute because his book is now out. So please stay tuned and please tag your friends on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. They can watch us now or watch us later. Hi, everyone. I'm Sri. Thank you so much for being here. We're so grateful to you. Please tag your friends. Please let us know where you're watching from. We're going to share your comments and your questions with Damon and also get your thoughts on the topic of how we can all build from now. Uh, if you have not seen our show before, we have done more than 250 episodes and we've had more than 450 guests from 73 cities and 20 countries, including the chief scientist of the World Health Organization. You can find our archives at youtube.com slash Srinet. And big thanks to our partners at Scroll Global and Scroll.in. And really big thanks to our producers, Rose Horowitz, at Rose Horowitz 31, and Vandana Menon, Vandana underscore Menon. Please follow them, and they will be live tweeting and sharing during the show. The show is brought to you by my company, DigiMentors, which does social and digital consulting, produces conferences, summits, webinars, and talk shows like this. So if you have any opportunity to work with us, please let us know. We have done events for 50 people and events for 100,000 people. We bet your event is somewhere in between those two numbers. So please let us know when you get a chance. My email is sri at sri.net. We'd love to work with you. All right, are you ready for Damon Brown? I know I am. We have so much to learn from him. He's the author of Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. He's a co-founder of Cuddler, a company that has been acquired. He's a columnist at Inc. Magazine, and he's an entrepreneur and coach. You're going to learn a lot, as I always do when we spend time together. So please welcome onto our stage, Damon Brown. Hi, Damon. Hi, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you for being here. Absolutely. Let's ask the question we asked you a couple of months ago. How are you? Where are you? And how's your family handling the pandemic? Um, I am okay, which is actually great compared to <laughs> compared to how things could be right now. Uh, my family's doing well. Um, my wife's actually a pediatrician, so she already got the vaccine. So that's making us breathe a little bit easier because she's been on the front lines. You know, we're going on a year now, which is amazing. Um, thanks for your work, Shree, for doing the daily program up until a couple months ago. Like, whew. yeah, because we've needed stuff like that. That's one of, the reasons, <laughs> one of the reasons why I wrote Built From Now. It's like, just like you're doing, finding some way to nourish people because we really need it. Uh, but my family's doing great. Um, we're uh, sheltering in place here in Las Vegas. I'm the primary caretaker, which I talk about in my previous books. And so I have a four-year-old and a seven-year-old. They're both very, thank you. They're both very healthy boys. Um, you can relate to that from a few years back with, with your twins. And so you know where I'm at right now. So I'm just happy that they're healthy and they are keeping me extremely young and you know, keeping me doing the bath salts to, for my sore body after running them around all day. <laughs> but you know, it's, uh, all I can do is smile. Like I'm, I'm glad everyone's healthy around me. And that's all I can ask for, you know? Well, you're always smiling and it's contagious, your smile. So thank you for being with us and congrats on the launch of the book. I thank do you. wanna ask, is there any element of vaccine jealousy in the house 
when one person has the vaccine and the others don't. Wow. Um, the kids, you know, they're not giving the vaccine to kids yet because there still needs to be clinical trials. So unfortunately, they're not going to get protected for a little while. And luckily, as far as studies go, they don't have as much of an issue with being uh, being sick from it. For myself, um, I'm barely leaving the house. Um, and Shri, we go back quite a few years. You know, I love to travel. I love different cultures. I do keynotes, again, similar to you. And I miss that. That's the only thing that I'm feeling. Um, so it's not so much jealousy of my wife. And, you know, if anything, I, I feel protective of her. So I'm sleeping a little bit easier this time of year. Um, but as far as vaccine jealousy, you know, I have older parents. I have people around me who are really sick and they were sick before the pandemic. So if I have to wait in line for that, that's not a big deal. I'm, I'm blessed to be still relatively young and healthy. So, you know, I'll take my turn. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to just say thank you to your wife for her work as a frontline worker. So important what she's doing. And yes. it's really great to see the way you folks work together with the kids and the work that you're able to do. So let's talk yeah. about it. Tell us about the book and what people yeah. need to know about Build From Now, starting with that name. What does that mean? It means exactly what it means. And I had... um. I, I struggle with the title a little bit. You understand journalism just like I do. And the title is the thing. If your title is messed up, then people aren't going to get it. And it's built from now how to know your power, see your abundance, and nourish the world. And I worked in that subtitle pretty much all summer until it was time to actually commit to doing the book um, and getting it over to the, the publishers. Because actually, I'm an independent publisher. I have my own imprint. So I'd work with the printers and all that stuff. And you have to do that well in advance. And so you had to lock that down early if it's going to get listed. So build from now means to create with whatever you've got. Build from now talks about the four resources we all have. It's focus, agility, time, and energy. That's focus, agility, time, and energy. I call them the fates, so you can remember them. They're also on the cover of the book, so you see the symbols here. And we all have these different resources as long as we're healthy and alive. We can all focus, we all have agility, we all have time, and we all have energy, right? If we don't have those, then we've moved on to another, another place. The difference, though, which makes Build From Now a little bit different, is that I believe everyone has different resources depending on where they're at. For instance, my deep thing right now is focus. I'm extremely focused right now, which is why I was able to write a book during a pandemic, and my coaching practice, and my usual journalism, and taking care of the two boys, because I'm a really focused person right now. I don't have a whole lot of energy just because, you know, I'm approaching middle age and I got two little kids. I don't have a whole lot of time for the exact same reasons. And so leaning into these strengths allows us to build from wherever we are, even during a pandemic. The deeper level, which I think you to relate to, and it kind of ties into our conversation from, what, six, nine months ago when I was last on the program, is that you also have to talk about the systemic things that are happening, particularly over the past year. And so there are certain systems in place, certain people in place that are making decisions that are affecting other people of certain cultures, certain genders, certain um, um, leanings and orientations. And so that factor needs to be put in. But once you understand that factor, then you can figure out what you can actually do about it. And so the book is very much into recognizing that we have major challenges. We've always had major challenges, particularly here in America. And the first half of the book, which is called An Outside Job, talks about the systems and the challenges that we all are facing that became extremely clear, you know, in 2020 and are still unfolding, unfortunately, through this year. The second half of the book is called An Inside Job. And what I really want to do is give hope and say, OK, man or people or whatever created these systems that might be oppressing people, that might be judged, have us be judged against each other, might be dividing us. But if we created these systems, then we actually might have the power based on these four resources to change the system, not destroy it, but change it. And so based on that premise, I'm really trying to give people the tools to build from now. And Again, I'm very proud of the title because I, I, I keep thinking, even after I publish a book, I think about if there's a better title and I can't think of one. It's like build from now. What are you going to do? Build from now. You can't build from yesterday. And you can't build tomorrow. Build with the resources you got. And so that's the intention of the book. One of the ways that I 
think about this moment is all the things that are happening and the way the Biden administration is using Build Back Better. And that fits into what you're saying. What is your yeah. understanding of the difference between Build Back Better and Build From Now? Have you spent any time thinking about that? No, you know what? And and obviously, I don't have any inside track on the Biden administration. So I didn't know where to go there. Evidently, there's some Carl Jung collective unconscious thing going on here as far as building. Um, I think building back better is fine. You know, and I, and I think it's something that people get, can get behind. That sounds cool. I want I, I call it build from now because I want a sense of urgency. I want it to be OK. I want the world to be a better place. So I'm going to start it on Thursday. It's like, no, no, no. Build from now. We're going to build it back better. But when? How long is it going to take? When are we going to take the first steps? This isn't a criticism of the administration at all. It's just that's why build back better wouldn't be my slogan for this. It's like, no, there's, there's a sense of, um, for some groups and some people, there's a sense of complacency as far as saying, let's get back to the way things were. I'm a middle-aged African-American with a uh, immigrant Hindi wife and two, you know, Blindian kids, both boys. I don't want to go back to the way America was, right? So the idea of build back better, cool, but build from now means what are we actually working with right now? So it's the double-fisted approach, if, if you don't mind my terminology with that, where if that makes sense, where it's like on one hand, build from now as far as the past doesn't have anything for us. So we need to build from now. That's one. And then build from now as far as the urgency, like build from now, like with what you've got, right? Like I just did my book launch a couple couple of weeks ago. You know, I have a million things going on and I'm taking the time to spend with you. Just like I'm sure you're very busy and you're taking the time to spend with me. This is building from now. Because if you wait for that perfect moment or say we're going to build better later, what does that even mean? And so in my coaching practice, in my books, in my keynotes, I try to give that sense of you have enough, you are enough. So build from now, make something happen now. The resources aren't going to get any better <laughs> and the world definitely isn't going to get any better unless you get involved. You know, that's kind of the intention. I think that's a beautiful concept because a lot of us do wait for the right moment to get started. We say, okay, we'll we'll start in a few weeks or in a few days, and you're saying start now. How does this fit in with things like New Year's resolutions? I mean, we're almost you know 10% of the year in already. Oh, don't say How that. How do you think about that? <laughs> right, 10% already, you're absolutely right, geez. I think it goes into, um, and I've, I've done a, quite a few articles on Inc. On, uh, with this, and I've actually launched my own little YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Brown Damon. So I have regular insights that I put on there. It's usually 1130 AM Pacific standard time. So you go to youtube.com slash Brown Damon. And I've already done about like 60 of these little vignettes or like 10 minutes. 60. And then a couple. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. When I get, Hey, when I get into something, I, I, I dive in, you know, but that's why I admire you so much because you yeah, <laughs> we're, we're kind of peers in that sense where we get into something and we go all the way in. Um, but I've, I've talked about New Year's resolutions, of course, you know, a few weeks back during the New Year's. And there's two big recommendations I'd have with New Year's habits. Number one is to focus more on routines rather than habits. So that's one. The second part I'd say is to come up with a 10-year or a five-year strategy instead of a one-year strategy. I think it was Bill Gates that said that people overestimate what they can do in two years, but underestimate what they can do in 10. And with Build From Now, I'm approaching a two or three year plan with that, where there's stuff that I want to do that, frankly, I couldn't do during pandemic. So this is going to, this is for the long haul. Um, with my first major independently published book, which was uh, The Bite Says Entrepreneur, which came out um, four and a half years ago. I think you see it behind me, but I'll show it to you. Um, when that came out and it became a bestseller, I wasn't expecting that, which ended up being a blessing because it ended up being real genuine work. But then I had to kind of work backwards and say, okay, I have a bestseller. People are asking for my coaching. I'm starting to do keynotes. Now what? And I'm in a different place where I'm like, okay, now I can build, again, build from now, but also build out bigger. So I think when it comes to New Year's resolutions, and I'll talk about my personal stuff on that, or my personal take, going for the long haul, 
forget the year. This year is going to fly by. Like, I'm already thinking about 2022. You know, what's going on in 2023? Especially, and you're, you're familiar with some of this with the book process. Um, I have a faster schedule because I'm independently published. I have my own imprint called Bring Your Worth. But with traditional published books, which I did 18 of those before I started my own imprint, they take 18 to 24 months to come out. So if I got a book deal right now from a traditional publisher, it will be out in early 2023 if they are on a fast schedule. And so, so important. Thank you. And you see, I'm wearing my Build From Now t-shirt. They're available at DamonBrown.net. And so, so if you're in that mentality of making a true impact on the world, then you can't be thinking like two months from now. I just had a, um, um, on, on my, my show, again, the youtube.com slash Brown Damon, call it the Bring Your Worst Show, named after my imprint, my last book. I talked about how you can do whatever you want, but it has to be within the context of reason, right? Because Sri, you could say, assuming you're not a millionaire already, you could say, hey, I'm going to become a millionaire. And then you say, by March. Okay, unless you get some Bitcoin or something, that's not going to happen. And so we end up getting frustrated and then having bigger setbacks because we have unrealistic expectations, as opposed to saying, I want to be a millionaire in 2025. Well, you got about four years. You got some work you can do and you can build backwards from there. You know, start with the end in mind, which I think is what Stephen Covey said, the late Stephen Covey said many years ago. I think the second aspect of that, which I got into earlier, is that. Um, we focus more on New Year's habits, like I'm going to eat right. Like, what does that mean? Like, that changes from culture, that changes based on what age you are. There's certain things that I wouldn't eat now that I ate when I was 20. Um, but if you focus on routines, though, then that's a little bit different. Because I found that routines have that flexibility. Um, I meditate every morning for five minutes. Sometimes it's super early in the morning before my kids wake up. Sometimes it's in the middle of the afternoon, you know, but it, it, it does happen. So that's a routine. A habit to me is when you wake up and it's like, I have to go for a jog right now. But life doesn't accommodate to that. That's very brittle. And so, again, with the coaching clients that I work with, with even when I talk about with habits and routines and build from now, I'm trying to get us out of the mentality that it has to be fixed in this way. I've already I've always felt that way, but 2020 is huge evidence of that, right? Like my whole routine and my whole, all my habits are upside down, you know, from 7 a.m. My kids sometimes wake up at 5.30 a.m. So from 5.30 a.m. till 1 to 2 o'clock, it's prime time for them. You know, and it's getting them fed, getting them clothes. There are two brothers to so make sure they don't fight each other, <laughs> make sure everybody's clean, <laughs> you know, and then get everyone fed because they like to eat. We're a food forward family, as I said in the previous episode. So they're always eating. Um, and then it's it's them for, you know, five, six, seven hours, whatever that is. My routine before was the opposite, right? I'd go drop them off at school or preschool, or whatever. And then I come home and then it's Damon time and it's time to be on media and it's time to work with clients and so forth. And suddenly it's inverted, you know, and we have to work with that. So what I'm trying to do, I guess if it was one word with the people that I'm working with and the message I'm trying to send is that idea of um, a resilience and not resilience as far as fighting against something, but as far as being flexible, being malleable. And if we haven't learned that this year, then I don't have a whole lot of hope for us learning it in the future. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it feels like a good time for the book where it's like, all right, you already had to be super flexible. Here's this book. And maybe you can think about your best resources and be more flexible as hopefully the world opens up and becomes a little bit less chaotic. You know? Thank you so much. You've already taught me the difference between a habit and a routine. And I think understanding that is really cool. And I'm going to think about that in my own uh, life as I try to get through this year. want to remind everyone we're talking to Damon Brown. He's at Brown Damon on Twitter and YouTube. He's got a YouTube channel that he's tell that's new. And his website is damonbrown.net, where you can find his work as a coach and as a best-selling author. And of course, his new book. I want to show again the book jacket here so you can see it. Oh, thank you. How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance, and Nourish the World. 
Tell us those symbols, please. What is each of them? Oh, for, for sure. So it's called the fates. So the, and we can just, if you can see it clearly on there, it goes right down the line. It's focus, agility, time, and energy. So focus is your ability to zero in on something. Agility, which is a really popular term, as you know, up in Silicon Valley, is the ability to adapt. Something happens, you adjust to it, you make the best of it. You have time, and of course, that means having the swath of time. I did a, um, a TED Talk based on Build From Now. You can, again, check it out on my channel at youtube.com slash Brown Damon, and it's all on there. And I talked about how there were two different camps with time. I call it pandemic time. So there were a lot of people that were trying to, you know, figure out the next sourdough bread recipe, and they were doing jigsaw puzzles, and they were bored out of their mind. And there were other groups like myself who were... <laughs> We had like no time and they were working so hard on it and trying to balance all this stuff that was suddenly needed of them, which happened about a year ago, which is amazing uh, when that all that hit in March of 2020. So that's time. And some people have an abundance of time. Some people are still in that pandemic time. Right. Finally, there's energy. And that's the ability, as I describe it in the book, to follow through. So to say, I'm going to do something and I'm going to finish it. I think sometimes we look at energy and um, I have my kids in my mind. So you think of like my youngest, he's four. So he has a ton of energy, but he's kind of going all over the place. I don't call that energy. I think that's more, um, I don't know, um, expression, play. But energy, I feel like, is more concentrated where it's like, I'm going to be present for this conversation. I'm going to put my energy into this book. That's what I mean by energy. And so those are the four, the four elements, if you want to call them that. Focus, agility, time, and energy. And with, I'm approaching three, maybe 400 people that I've coached over the years. And once you start to get to that scale of anything, you start to see patterns. And you're like, wait, okay, this person this person has more focus, but they don't seem very agile. And this person has more time, but they don't have a whole lot of energy. And it started to formulate in the back of my mind where I'm like, well, maybe there's some type of framework here. Um, and it, it came pretty naturally and it just kind of came together. And I started implementing it into my coaching practice a little bit before the book. And suddenly I started to see results with the people that I was trying to help, uh, as well as in the ink column, because you'll see kind of a bread, breadcrumb trail as far as me experimenting with these ideas, um, as you see with any type of journalism, who, that's eventually turning into a book. And so it's it's been really encouraging to get that early feedback. And now finally, January 28th, the book is out, and the feedback so far has been really good. And it's really pushing people to think beyond, again, think beyond what they think they're capable of before. And that's what I want. It's like, we didn't make it through 2020 and hopefully make it through 2021. We didn't do all this to be average. We didn't do all this to build the world back the way that it was. We didn't do that. What? That's, we don't want that. That feels like a waste of time to me. That feels like a waste of all the elements that I'm talking about. So if we're going to do that, and we're complaining about things not being right and things being inequitable. And we need to do the DEI with the you know, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we need to do this with the police force and all that. All right. So when are we going to get started? It's not going to get any easier. Now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I need to ask for amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen. You've got it. <laughs> Folks, the book is called Build From Now, and we want you all to check out his website at damonbrown.net. Let's look at some of the comments that are coming in. Jonathan Borstein is watching from the East Village. He has watched 264 episodes. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for being here. You, Linda Jonathan. Lawrence from Long Island. Steve Taylor's watching from Philadelphia. Thank you, Steve. Hey, I'm and from South Akilish Jersey. says Welcome this is you. good. Roman is watching from... San, Santo Domingo in the nice. DR. And mm -hmm. uh, just great to be on all these platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and LinkedIn. Tag a friend who would benefit from Damon's wisdom and his insights. They can watch live or watch later on any of these platforms. Daryl has good news. He, he got the uh, Moderna vaccine on February 3rd and the second mm -hmm. dose on March 3rd. Is sore arm for two days, but no other effects. Apollo, who used to live in Vegas, is actually in Montclair, New Jersey. And hi, Apollo. Uh, he says it's a struggle to build from now. What do you say about that? Yeah, he's right. 
Yeah, that, he's absolutely right. Um, the intention with Build From Now is not to say that it's easy. I, I never say that in the book. And it's, you know, it's not a small book. Like it's quite a few words in there. And, and I never say that. And and I think you're I think you're right. It is a struggle. The point is, is that to quote Seth Godin, who's a favorite author of mine, um, it's not going to get easier tomorrow. So whatever we're struggling with, it's not going to get automatically get easier tomorrow. One thing that I think about, and I've mentioned it in a couple of my books, is that I believe it's, I want to say Mandarin, but I always get it mixed up. But it's some form of Chinese language where the word for chaos is the exact same word for opportunity. Like they're interchangeable. And I learned that probably 20, 30 years ago. Um, yeah. And so I always think about that, where is it going to get easier for you to make a difference? When we have a time, because you brought up the, the new administration. So we have a new administration. We've been on lockdown fairly consistently, most of us. <laughs> some folks, I was on a live show and some folks corrected me, like not everyone's been on lockdown continuously. So I'll, I'll say that liberally. Most of us have been on lockdown. We have a new administration. Um, we're in a new year. Um, we've been sheltering in place for the most part, right? And so I love, as I mentioned, I love to travel. I love new cultures. As soon as these vaccines or whatever five different theories scientists are peddling around right now, depending on what camp you're in, over the next year or two, things are going to open back up again. That's pretty clear. And it makes me feel really good to say that, like that's been established. When else is there going to be this much upheaval? And when there's upheaval, there's opportunity. When else are we going to talk about redesigning the police force? Right? That's never happened in, in my lifetime. You know? And I was there for the Rodney King verdict. You know, I, I have family in LA when it happened. Like, I was there for all these things. I remember when Trayvon was killed. Like, I remember all this stuff. I had folks that were going down to Ferguson. Like all the all these things, but suddenly, suddenly we're having a serious conversation about it. So, so to your point, like yes, it is a struggle, but I think the false assumption we make is that it's suddenly going to get easier and not be a struggle later. I'm happy to be the bearer of bad news. It's not going to get easier. So this is the opportunity. This is now. This is why I wrote a book during a pandemic. <laughs> you know, it's like no, we need to get this out now. That was, you know, it, that was a struggle, you know, but that discussion needed to happen right now. Just like, you know, you Shree, with doing your daily, your daily shows, you knew that needed to happen right now. I'm sure it wasn't always easy for you. I'm sure it was a struggle sometimes, but you showed up. That's all I'm asking of people who are interested in the book, who buy the book, just do something. Now, now's the time. It's not going to get easier a year from now. And it's so much easier when things are malleable. That's the word I'm looking for. When things are malleable to change. We're talking about changing systems. Do you know how hard that is? <laughs> systems that are often rooted in racism or prejudice or stubbornness or inertia or just plain laziness. But people are willing to change now. The conversation is happening every day on Twitter or on Facebook, or whatever. It's happening in these group chats that I'm on. It's happening in the books, including hopefully my book. When else is it going to get better? And so that's my very long way of saying that, yes, the struggle is real, as we say. And what? We're not going to do anything about it. And it's not going to get easier. So get started. Sorry, I was muted there. Uh, no this is uh, how people cir circumscribe you versus how you define yourself is a challenge. Uh, the power is letting your truth illuminate. Yes. And Rick is also posting that begin again, build anew, and is pointing to an, our, our uh, times like these celebrating America from the Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters. And Stefan Kaplan is here, who. Uh, says, greetings, my friends. Wonderful to be here with, with, with you and Damon. Thank you. And uh, please check out the Spin It Social Hour on social media, his great show as well. Rajit says hi. And Nick hi. Hathi Singh is saying hello from California as he heads home to the Northeast here. He's watching in the car. So hello. 
and thanks for watching. Nir just says, insightful session. Thank you. And my father's watching from Kerala. Hi, Acha. Great to see you. All of us have to build Bye. from now. But the sense of urgency he brings into it is significant. So I think that's a great way of thinking about, about it. Thank you. Vandana, our producer, has an amen in there. You're just watching from <laughs> I was Mumbai. waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jonathan says, uh, where do you build from watching 264 shows? So that, <laughs> I, woo. You have yeah, our gratitude. A, that's uh, that's it to you. Oh. Anika says, this is awesome. I love how he said the same word can be for chaos and opportunity for growth. Uh, and it's like that proverb about may you live in interesting times, which we are certainly also, living in now. And we are exactly. dealing with all of the impact of that. Yes, for sure. I think about that. I think about that saying a lot. One thing that I wanted to ask you, you mentioned. Yes, sir. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just saying yes, sir. I was going to, um, you mentioned the idea that you have Blindian kids who are black and Indian. And mm -hmm. we now have a second family in in Washington, D.C. Uh, yeah. That is, a, uh, the, the vice, vice president is Blindian herself. And yep. uh, talk a little bit about uh, what it's like to raise that kind of family, and what does it mean at this moment to have Vice President Harris be Blindian herself? Wow, I don't even know where to start, to be honest. And you know me, I'm not at, usually at a loss for words. Um, <laughs> for us, I'll take it even back to our wedding when we got married uh, going on a decade ago. And um, our wedding, once we decided to do it, we actually had a traditional Hindi wedding. So I came in on a horse and we had the Bhangra drums and the whole thing. It was a beautiful experience. I'm glad we decided to do it that way. But we also, my background or my studies are more closer to, or closer to Buddhism, which as you know, Sri, that kind of overlaps anyway, you know, if you know the Buddhist history. And so we had a Buddhist part of the ceremony and um, my best friend actually was a Buddhist monk, and so he actually did the, um, the um, what do you call them, the vows for the Buddhist portion of it, since I didn't know that part. Um, but then, most importantly, during the dinner portion, again, I told you we're food forward. During the dinner portion, half of it uh, during the wedding, during the reception, was the traditional Northern Indian food, and she's from Gujarat. So it was... Um, yeah, it was lots of the the curries and the samosas, and I'm, I'm getting hungry because I had a small dinner. But yeah, but lots of that food, really, really good food. Um, I'm really into the um, chicken tikka masala, which is it's, isn't veggie, but they they allow that to come through, as well as the uh, spinach or sag paneer, which I'm really into. I could eat that all day, and my mother-in-law makes an amazing one. Anyway, that was part of the thing, but the other half goes back to my background where my great grandmother was actually from New Orleans. And so we had beignets, we had, um, I believe we had crab cakes or some variant of that. Um, we had all kinds of nice Creole and Cajun food there. And so from the beginning, it was very much like, and this is before we had kids or anything, this was just us dating, getting engaged, getting married. We established from the forefront that both of these cultures were equal. And so we wanted to have kids and we wanted who, whatever kids we had, however many, <laughs> whatever gender they happen to be, whatever they decided to do, whatever direction they were going in, they would hold each, each of those cultures in, in, in equal value. And that, that and for us, that began, again, from the build from now idea, that began with the wedding. And so hopefully I get some insight as far as our mindset of it, where, you know, um, Harriet Tubman is celebrated as much as Gandhi, like they're equal partners here. And so seeing Kamala Harris with her ascension, we used to live in California, so we were already familiar with her for a while. I used to live in San Francisco, so you know I knew a lot about her well before her ascension, and it was a pretty rapid one. But for all of our relatives, it ended up being a fascinating moment, um, no matter what the political persuasion, because it very much was like five glass ceilings being broken at the same time. <laughs> You know, it's like, 
<laughs> it's like first black and first woman and then for, first South Asian and, you know, and just going deeper and deeper. And so very much a sense of pride. And um, I had taken pictures and, and shared with my family of my two little boys watching it on the iPad on that, you know, on January 20th and sharing it with the grandparents and all that stuff. And it's like, wow, this is like a moment. Like there's a before and an after, and no matter what happens after this, that ceiling has been broken. And I think there's a beautiful poetry to that. Like, I think we'd often underestimate that where we think again to, I think that was Apollo that was saying that is a struggle and that's absolutely true. But once you break that, then it becomes a different game. It's kind of like the the traditional thing they talk about with the four minute mile, right? Where that four minute mile was considered a scientific impossibility until I think it was a high school or a college student, I always forget his name, back in the late thirties, I believe, broke the Roger four minute Barrister, mile. Yeah. Thank you, you're on it. He broke it and then suddenly you know the story. Within like a year, like 20, 30, 100 other people broke it. And now like high school students are just breaking it all the time. So that's what I mean by that struggle is very hard. But once you do that, then it almost becomes like a muscle. And we're all, you're able to see what you're capable of doing, which is what my thing is as far as being a coach and author and all that stuff. So helping you with your capability, but then just as important, other people are seeing what's possible. So even if you go through your struggle and you have difficult times or you barely make it, you know, and you know all the inside battles that you had, you're pointing in the direction for someone else. And there might be someone else who might not have the fortitude to keep going on that struggle, but they see you and they're able to move forward. And I have, you know, little black and brown nieces and nephews and so forth. And for them to see Kamala Harris, it's just like, oh, that's nothing. Um, a really quick parallel, which which hit me hard, and I might have mentioned this as the last podcast, but it still boggles my mind where um, I'm casual with you, but I usually have a blazer that I put on. And I was putting on my blazer about a year ago, and my youngest, who th was three at the time, asked me if I was going to do a TED Talk. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and I had done three at that time, so it was, you know, but here's this little black and brown boy just past toddlerhood. And his black father doing a TED talk is like nothing. So not even for my ego, I'm all like, whoa, like, like, you know, like the bar is like, it's nothing to him. You know, when he's 20, whatever wants to do a TED talk, he's going to go and do a TED talk. Like it's nothing to him. We've already raised the bar for our family and, and hopefully, thank you, but hopefully we're all doing that you know, through Ms. Harris and, and, and other things that we're doing right now, like, like, us raising those expectations, not from a sense of pressure, but quite the opposite, where it's like, no, you can do that. You don't need to be special. You don't need to be rich. You don't need to be this class, this, that, and the third. You don't need to check mark, you know, check these boxes. It's like, no, just be yourself. Again, the build from now idea, be yourself, work with the resources you got. You showing up is enough. And then you get as far as you can. The struggle is going to happen either way. So you might as well start creating something and make a difference, you know? Stefan says, build from now and always be learning and creating. And Mark Lee, watching from Durham, North Carolina, one of my favorite past guests. How are you doing, Damon and Sri? He asks. And I'm well. Mark was Thank a you. terrific guest on our show as we learned how to be allies, those of us who are not black, how we can be allies of the black community. And to understand also one of the points that he made, that there isn't one black community, just like there isn't one Indian community. And Correct. it's a lot of different communities that are uh, lumped together, of course. Uh, we only have a few minutes left with Damon, and we want to give him a chance to come uh, to give us some final thoughts and to plug that book again. Before we do <laughs> that, we want to tell you what's coming up on, on our side. On Thursday, we have a terrific guest joining us. We're very excited that Mark Lucky will be with us. He's at Mark S. Lucky on Twitter. He is a digital strategist and is the author of the new novel, Valley Girls. He led media partnerships for Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, and was head of innovative, uh, he was the editor of innovative or, or innovative journalism at the Washington Post. 
and he's recognized by The Root as one of the most influential African-Americans in the country. So please do join us. That's on Thursday at 9, 9 p.m. Eastern time. So please join us to meet Mark. And then also a plug for our upcoming episodes of the New York Times Read Along. We had a wonderful month already. We had Charles Blow, who's the author of The Devil You Know. And we had George Vesey this past Sunday on Super Bowl Sunday. And this on Valentine's Day, we have Daniel Jones, who's the editor of the Modern Love podcast column and TV show, which many of you follow. And then we have Elizabeth Becker and Ron Lieber coming up on successive Sundays. So please join us on Sundays at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. That is the time at uh, about 5.30 where Damon's waking up because of his sons <laughs> <laughs> on a Sunday. I hope they let him sleep in on no, Sunday. They're, One they're, thing they're I did see uh, <laughs> just today was a father posting that his daughter is now graduated from high school and for the start of her winter break he woke her up at 5 30 as his revenge for all the times she woke <laughs> him up at 5 30. so i don't know if you've planned your revenge on these boys for about a decade from now yeah i'm i'm a strategist so i, I told you i'm looking five years in advance like i wasn't <laughs> kidding about that like <laughs> I, I have to say, though, um, I was actually dipping around my, my office because uh, Mark Lucky is actually a friend of mine. And I have a copy of Valley Girl somewhere around here. I'm actually in the middle of reading it. And it's it's a really interesting oh, novel good, so good, far. Good. But yeah, I, I love Mark. He's going to be a great guest. Um, yeah, hopefully I can swing by and say hi. Yeah. Please do. Thursday at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So let's talk about the book one more time and also tell us yeah. about the website. I'm going to throw it on the screen here. Uh, what do people find there and how can people hire you as a speaker, as a coach, all of that good stuff? Yeah. So um, the book is Build From Now, How to Know Your Power, See Your Abundance and Nourish the World. You can go to buildfromnowquiz.com, buildfromnowquiz.com. And I set up a free quiz a few hundred of y'all have already taken it, which I was impressed by. Um, and it will tell you very quickly within a two, three minute multiple choice quiz, what your biggest resource is. As we talked about at the top, focus, agility, time, and energy. And once you realize that, then you know um, what you're working with and where what resources you have the best. So check it out at buildfromnowquiz.com. At DamonBrown.net, which Shree's kind enough to put up there, that is the headquarters for everything. Um, again, I own my own publishing imprint, so when you buy one of my books, you're buying literally from me. I have no backing. I am bootstrapping just like I did my first startup, first two startups several years ago when my first son was born. And so you can go to DamonBrown.net. You can get signed copies of the books from me. Again, built from now, um, the predecessor, Bring Your Worth. Sorry with the shine. That's the name of the um, the imprint. So a lot of y'all end up getting into me based on that. And then I have my bestseller, The Ultimate Bite Size Entrepreneur. They're all available on there from me. You can get them at the traditional outlets as well, Amazon or what have you. But you get them from me, I will actually ship them to you and sign them. I also have um, box sets that are, that are available if you want to get all three of my major business books. You can get that over there. You can also get the Built From Now t-shirt, which you can see. And a lot of y'all gotten that as well as this tasty mug that can hold water and other beverages. That's based on my previous book, uh, Bring Your Worth. Um, I'm also a one-on-one -on -one coach. And I don't think we talked about that at the top of the hour, but my main thing is helping side hustlers, solopreneurs, and other non-traditional entrepreneurs because I'm one of them. So I became an entrepreneur the exact same time that I became a stay-at-home dad. And my son was four months old. I did my two startups, So Quotable, and then one I'm really known for, Cuddler, with from when my son was four months old to when we sold Cuddler right after his second birthday, when he's two years old. So for that two-year period of time, I was working from 3.15 a.m. to 6 a.m. on these two startups. And then from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. until my wife got home, it was just prime time with the boy and later on the boys because we had another one and I. And so I get your journey. So that's why like, I want to give these tools. Like if you're trying to balance older parents at home, 
little kids at home, if you're sheltering in place, if you have a side hustle, but you want to do this other thing, if you have a passion inside of you, but you don't know how to get those resources together. Not only have I researched this and I'm a journalist and I've spoken at TED and have, have access to all these brilliant minds, but I've also been on that journey myself. And so I have a coaching practice that's all available on there. You can get all the details on it where I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, similar to this, obviously sheltering in place over the, over the computer. And I have coaching clients, man, in Germany and Northern Africa. Um, I think I had one in Australia. And then of course, a lot, a lot of them here, here in North America and even some in South America. And I realized in traveling and in doing some of my keynotes when we weren't sheltering in place, that cultures actually have a lot of overlap. When I was down in Bogota, Colombia, did a keynote a few years ago, they're asking the same questions that the people in, say, Chicago were asking after I did a keynote. And so there's a universality with it as far as us being these non-traditional entrepreneurs, people who don't pattern match into the Elon Musk, rest in peace to Steve Jobs, um, the Jeff Bezos aesthetic. I don't fit that. And I think there's a new generation of entrepreneurs like myself that I want to help lead or at least give them the tools to do that. All that's on davenbrown.net. And then lastly, as Shri talked about, I also have my new YouTube channel. It is a little bud, but I've done a lot of things that started as little buds and they grew really quickly. So I love the process of starting something new. I can't travel and I can't give y'all a hug. I can't have a drink with y'all. I can't connect with y'all. I can't speak to hundreds of y'all at one time. You can't see me. So the YouTube channel, probably similar to what Sri experienced, is me actually building a community and finding ways to give wisdom, hopefully wisdom. <laughs> I'm calling it wisdom. I don't know what other people will call it. But I'm giving people wisdom and insight and discussions and places for argument with that. And that's over at youtube.com slash brown damon. That's youtube.com slash brown damon like my stuff, put comments on there, but most importantly, subscribe, because I'm a new channel. Again, Shri knows any support I can give would be great. Now encourage me to keep giving. Until recently, it was a daily show. So as Shri was teasing me about, I started like two months ago, I already got 60 episodes. Like, so come through, <laughs> you can binge it like Netflix, like come through, you know, if you're liking the conversation now, and Shri is an awesome interviewer, if you want some more of this kind of insight, come through. And also on the channel, I have our previous uh, episode as one of those things in the, in the playlist. And so you can come through and see our previous episode uh, that, that uh, I had a really good time talking with you, Shri. I think it was last June or July. And it was such a wonderful time. It's hard so, to remember. Hard to remember. <laughs> I'm so good with time and but my I, sense of time is awful. But no. I remember you you talked about the book and we, you envisioned that you would be able to come back on the show and you did. So that ability to think forward and plan and strategize, wonderful. Rich Tong says, thanks for doing this show. And Thank Mark you. says, my dad said he would get revenge on my brother by training his grandkids, brother, son, to get back at them. And <laughs> uh, Mark says he thinks he was one of the first to take the quiz. Again, buildfromnowquiz.com. Yes, so yes, you can free you. quiz yeah, thank and you, you will get a lot of insights. Apollo says, awesomeness. Neil Parekh, who runs our, who's the executive producer of the, uh, uh, of the New York Times daily, uh, read along and uh, runs our events at DigiMentors as vice president of events is uh, saying thanks for joining us tonight. Damon's you, always a great guest says Damon, thank you. And Bob Anthony says, supportive online communities have been so valuable in these times. Thanks for your efforts. Please, everyone, follow Bob. He's amazing on social. He's at New York Bob. And Rose, who is one of our producers of the show, great to hear about your new book and says thanks for joining us. So that's that's Thank great. Uh, any final thoughts before we let you go? Uh, just remember that uh, today is a blessing. So it's not going to get any easier. And if you keep waiting, the only thing that's going to get shorter is time. So build from now. You don't have to buy my book. You just get started. And hopefully this conversation is a Kickstarter to that. Sure. It really, it really is. And thank you so much for that. Our guest has been Damon Brown. There's his book, Build From Now. Know your power, see your abundance and nourish the world. And coming up on Thursday is a friend of both Damon's and mine, Mark Lucky, who led media partnerships for 
Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit, and has talked a lot about what it's like to be a black man in Silicon Valley, and we'll talk to him. So thank you very much, Damon, and we'll thank see you. everybody soon. Thank you, thank you, thank you.